This is the kind of conversation I'm trying to avoid. There's a reason this protocol's been around since early sound days, 1932, 33. I read an article about somebody approaching Fatty Arbuckle without clearance. And Fatty Arbuckle just broke a beer bottle over his head. Yeah, it's been a while since I've heard a Fatty Arbuckle reference. What did you just come from Margaret Dumont's house? Okay. Lewis. Uh, Lewis, I thought I had the clearance. It's a system. Uh, yeah. We have a system for a reason. I'll go through the system. You're listening to League Podcast, Curbcast, Season 12, Episode 8, The Colostomy Bag. I'm Matt Derson. Play Inferno here. This is like the pen penultimate episode of Curb Your Enthusiasm, if that makes any sense. I think I just made it up. But Yeah, there's probably a word for that too, but I know what you mean. <laughs> there's only two more left. <laughs> there's only two more left. So next week is the penultimate, and the last one I I suppose is the ultimate or whatever, but it's the finale. Ultimate Derson. Ultimate Derson. That's right. Yeah, we we are we're getting down to the nitty gritty, as they say. And we are building towards this trial still. Like, this is after, I feel like a couple of weeks where it wasn't really touched upon too much, you know? We have a little bit more of like, okay, the trial is, is, is a little bit more to that in this episode. This one is. Yeah, uh, also, um, also just kind of like, it, it is almost a standalone episode, but also like if you've been playing along like us making a podcast about it you know all the <laughs> all the little callbacks to the the uh i like right. the can bit and uh yep, and, yep. and other things that have happened throughout the season right but it's almost yeah. it's all it's a pretty good standalone you know what i mean yeah absolutely i think most a lot of this season has been and i guess a lot of the whole show the history of the show it's been kind of like that you know like there's like a, a thread that runs through the whole season, but also some of the episodes are just completely standalone. So, but I like this one a lot. The only thing, I mean, we were so, I was so happy with Funkhauser last week. He's not in this one, but that's oh, all. Right. Yeah. We have one of my favorite people that I am a huge fan of, Conan O'Brien. So, makes up for it. I love Conan. Love me some Conan. And Lewis, I mean, you know. And Lewis. See Lewis shining. Yeah, we'll we'll get there. I don't know. I I got sad, like looking just looking at Lewis. I mean, he's so funny, of course. So not that sad, not that kind of sad, because he's really loud. But I don't know. I, I'll get there. I have stuff to say when we get to the end. But um, well, I just you know we did our Lewis tribute, but right. I feel like it was a uh, a swan song that we get to see him. He he left us this gift, and we get to remember him fondly. Like shortly after he passed, that's kind of like how I, my attitude toward it. I love seeing him because I'm like, oh, it's probably one of the last things you did, you know? Yeah, I, it it was it was, but there's anyway. I'll 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 speak on it when we get there. But I want to start sure. right at the beginning we'll here. <laughs> we'll get there. Or LD, he pulls up. He's in a parking garage. He's singing the uh, like, I I can't even I don't know the name of that ditty. They like that da 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 da. <laughs> he does this a lot. You know? It's kind of like a circus song. Yeah, he's singing it. And, uh, you know, he's kind of looking at one of the guys there. So he, there's a valet, and he just tosses the keys to the valet. The valet catches it. The valet's happy. Whatever. It's it's a perfectly normal exchange. But one of the other valet, no, not a valet. There's just a guy. He's a guy. He's wearing this orange sweater. He's kind of a doughy looking guy, but he's funny. But yeah, he gives him kind of the stink eye. And uh, Larry can't, doesn't know why. So he goes in and they're doing a mock trial, basically. And, and there was a clip of this that came out like the day of the episode. And I was like, oh, oh. the trial started. And I posted right. it, and I was like, oh, is it like, are we in trial time now? But I was, we'll, we'll find out that it's a mock trial yes. for the, the Georgia thing. And Larry is not treating it uh, very seriously. And so Sean Hayes is back, Mantle, 
and he says, uh, try to treat this as if it were the real trial. And he's because he's like, ah, you know, uh, you know, I was in Georgia. I was supposed to a paid appearance and uh, I was told to be cordial. I thought I was being cordial. You know, like he brings that all back, as you said. A lot of callbacks, and this was a callback about being He's like, oh, I'm on trial for such a, oh, oh, yeah. a terrible crime. Bringing somebody who, a, a lady some water who was online to vote, which yeah. is the New York thing. When, you online. know, the yeah. right thing to say is we're in line. Are you <laughs> right in thing. line? Are you I in line? It's... But New Yorkers, they always say, I'm online to get pizza. We're like, are you in this line at CVS? Are you in line? Are you yeah, in line at CVS? I'm a top saver. I, I, <laughs> that's right. I, I, I am a top saver, and that's how I know to say in line. Where does that come from? Anyway, why do people – why do some people say online and some people I say I think it's the New York thing. And then it got – then it went to the West Coast when all the all those famous actor people moved to, to Los Angeles. They stayed online. I feel like it comes from like England or something though, you know, or or something like that. I, I don't know. Don't know either. Yeah, he Larry because he was born in New York. He says online, and they so the guy who gave him the stink eye earlier is on the fake jury, the mock jury, and he kind of gives him a look again, and Larry kind of gives him a look. It's kind of like hmm. Hmm, hmm. So he goes. They 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 break. And Sean Hayes mantle comes up and, you know, Larry's like, ah, he's like, how do you think it's going? He's like, I don't know. I don't know about this Mark jury. One of the guys down there, you know, gave me the stink eye when I tossed the keys. I think he thinks I'm a big shot. Or, you know, I'm not a big shot. <laughs> he's like, yeah, you don't want to be thought of as a big shot. He's like, where did you get these jurors? He's like, my assistant goes around the building and finds them. Yeah, and I missed that the first time, actually. I missed the first time, but I got that the second time. So that's it, it does come up. So then he's, and then they're just, whatever, they're talking, and he, he says, I think you should get rid of that guy. He could poison the whole jury. And he's like, well, let's just talk about, you know, the real trial. And so then he gets a text. Mantle gets a text. He's like, oh, here's Abe. And he's like, yeah, he, you know, he's like, oh, we're all worked out, huh? And he's like, yeah. He's like, what name did you use? He's like, let's keep that, uh, let's keep, you know, work stuff separate. And he's like, Okay, Larry, <laughs> but he really wants to know. So he says, "What name did you go with?" And he's like, "He's like, yeah, let's keep it separate." He says, "But you went with Zeckelman, right?" He's like, "Yeah, yeah, <laughs> so, yeah." So you can tell he he really would. He does still agree with Larry. Anyway, he goes to the car. He goes up to the man to the valet, and he's like, "Hey." What about the toss? Are you okay with the toss? And he says, yes. Yeah, the ballet is very nice. His name is Rodrigo. He's very, like, jovial. And Larry's like, it's fun, right? This becomes like a theme. Yeah, it's fun. It's fun. It's fun to toss. And so that he's like, your car is out front. Do you want me to get it? He's like, no, I, I'll get it. And he hands him some money as a tip. And it's a very nice exchange there. Yeah, Larry's trying to absolve himself from feeling guilty yeah. about the other guy giving him a stink eye. Yeah, well, he just wants to make sure, you know, I think he wants a little bit of, like, yeah, like, just assurance that it's okay to do that. Because Larry obviously feels it's okay, but that other guy didn't like it. Anyway, so he's he's driving along, and it, he sees Conan walking his dog, a Dalmatian, and he, he kind of looks at him. More on that later. We'll get there. So he goes to Jeff's house. There's a couple things here that I want to ask your opinion of, but um, we'll just get sure. to the – Larry's got one of those bags that you – like one of those fancy bags that you get when you go to like a fancy place. So he got Jeff a salad, and he takes out a sandwich, and he says, I think you're going to be jealous of my sandwich. And Jeff says like, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I can't have sandwiches. Uh, it, all right, so he can't. Yeah, he says I'm off sandwiches, whatever. So he's eating his salad. Jeff tells him, "Hey, I'm having back surgery, so I have to be on anesthesia. There's a three percent chance that something bad will happen. If that happens, Susie has power of attorney, but I don't trust her. I mean, can you imagine <laughs> not trusting your own wife when they have power of attorney? If, if something bad happens and you like, so she has the power to pull the plug, essentially. 
So he, he wants yeah. Larry to be that guy. He wants Larry to be able to pull the plug if something goes wrong. So they're like, Larry's like, okay, I can do that. He's like, well, so we just got to go fill out some paperwork. And then like, you know, if Susie finds out, this is, this won't, you know, this would be horrible. He's like, that's okay. My attorney's office is in the same office as Mantle. No one will know. We'll just be going to Mantle. And then like Susie walks in just as they're talking about it. And she's like, well, what if I find out it could be trouble? What's trouble or whatever? And I love they make up this story about he, I, like, not, they're not really making it up, but he, Larry says, oh, I lost the mock trial because one juror didn't like the fact that I tossed the keys and whatever. So, like, he uses, this is, this is what I used to do when I was, like, young and dumb. You know what I mean? I would, you take, like, if Change you're making up a, no, but if you're making up a lie like that, you use a bit of truth. You know what I mean? Like a bit of, you don't just pull something out of thin air, right? You're like, oh, right. we were talking Some about the mock. Yeah, exactly. It was, a, it was a very George Costanza thing. <laughs> but anyways, then he gets a call from, he, he says it's from Lewis. Lewis wants him to come because Lewis had, uh, he has long COVID, they say. So he lost his sense of smell and he needs LD's nose. Because he wants to smell a car. He wants to buy a car. And he wants to make sure there's not any odors in it. Which I guess is good thinking. Right? Yeah, mm-hmm. good thinking. Especially if it's an old car like that. You know? Right, right. And I remember all the cars that I grew up in all smelled like cigarettes. Because everyone was smoking in them all the time. <laughs> yeah. My maybe. whole family was smoking. Me too. So he needs his nose. So... Larry says um, he takes out a big hunk of cheese and he says it's Vander Vonderdonk. I've never heard of this. Have you ever heard of this? No, I looked it up and okay. it's not really a cheese, but there's a guy. What? It's not does, a cheese? No. Unless oh. I that they there's a scientist guy that found this element in the intestines of a cow that's made in udders. So it's like this this scientist, his name's Vonderdunk, and uh-huh. he found some beneficial uses for kind of a cheese related thing. So I uh-huh. I, I don't know why it's the Vonderdunk cheese or <laughs> maybe the two things aren't related, but I was I kept looking for it and I couldn't find anything except for the scientist named Vonderdunk who has made great leaps in All um, right. cow utter like <laughs> science. Seriously. I see Vonk cheese, but I don't see any Vonk. Yeah, maybe you're right. Maybe they kind of made it up. Whatever. Or he's... they named it after this guy. Yeah, that's reason. probably it. He's like, hey, I don't want this to sit in the car. Can I just leave it here? I'll be back today or tomorrow to pick it up. And Susan says, yeah, put it in the cheese drawer. So that's right. very... You know, that's a very, uh, you know, I feel like cut and dried. I'm going to come back tomorrow. Absolutely. Yeah. Yep. I'm leaving this here. Yeah. And besides, uh, we'll get there, but Jeff's not supposed to be eating sandwiches. So, you know, he's supposedly not going to eat the cheese. He sh- well, that's, yeah. Oh, very suspicious, but we'll get there. So the next scene, he and Lewis are in the car. They're talking about, well, he asked him about Conan. And he's like, hey, I saw Conan walking his dog in my neighborhood. And Lewis said, oh, yeah, he moved into that, you know, house, whatever. And he's like, oh, well, I didn't want to say anything. Like, you can't just go up to someone. And he's like, yeah, you know, you need clearance. And he says, can you get me clearance? And Lewis says, yeah, you, you need Conan clearance? I'll get you Conan clearance. <laughs> I'll get you Conan clear. Get me Conan clear. I'll get you Conan clear. <laughs> I can only imagine that Conan thinks that this is the most hilarious thing in the world, right? Like, like that anybody would need Conan clearance. I mean, he seems very approachable. In, you know, in oh, real yeah, life. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, I, totally. Our friend saw him in a restaurant here when he was visiting, and didn't want to go up to him, but sent him like a drink. Which he didn't drink, but then he came over to their table and did like 10 minutes. Yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> like, he's very nice and approachable, so he must have just read this and just thought it was the most hilarious thing. 
So anyway, and then he has a whole they have a whole bit. But also, right. you know, it's I, I was thinking about this, too. Like there's show Larry and then there's actual Larry. Yeah. And and Larry was on obviously to promote this season, but he was on going around needs a friend and everything. Oh, so, yeah. like, I was thinking, like, how come Conan? How, why would the why would show Larry need that clearance? Why does it show Larry know Conan already? You know what I mean? Right, right. Because show Larry knows Ted Danson. He knows Richard Lewis. Obviously, he knows everybody. Of course, he must know Conan. I don't know. Maybe you don't know him well enough to. Yeah, but also, I mean, you know, show show Larry doesn't have. 20 years of curb your enthusiasm to go on his show and promote. That's you know true. what I mean? So, That's true. But show Larry was just, I mean, young Larry was like the biggest show supposedly, right? Like in the world. Oh, like, right. Yeah. But for young Larry, you know, we've got the, the girl in on Kimmel. So, you know, yeah. Yeah. It's very, yeah. It's, it, I mean, it, it makes for a great premise, but yeah, it, it, it seems a little implausible that Conan wouldn't just, be like, that oh, show hey, Larry. Larry. Yeah. yeah, like Larry David, like, you know, probably like one of his comedy heroes. Like, wow, I love right. Yeah. The, the creator of Seinfeld. Show Larry is the creator of Seinfeld. So, interesting. Anyway, so we get to the destination, and the guy who is selling them the car is Steve Buscemi, but not Steve Buscemi. His name is DiCarlo. But yeah, I was like, oh, my God, another one of my favorites. In this episode, this right. is amazing. So, and another one we just, uh, you know, in the feed somewhere, you'll see our Reservoir Dogs yes. episode. Um, yeah. And yeah, yeah, it was a good tie in. That's right. A surprise, Mr. a good surprise. Mr. Pink himself. So, yeah, he's trying to sell the car, and they're like, you know, oh, he's a booster. You know, he's trying to sell it for more or whatever. And Lewis is sitting in it. And he's trying to head, you know, he's trying to like nod to get Larry to come and sit in the car and see if he can smell anything. And Larry finally goes, okay, I'm going to sit in it. And Lewis is like, what are you doing? I've been nodding over here for 10 minutes. He's like, well, that wasn't a nod. You need to, and I love their, their, they do this sort of imitation nod. <laughs> Larry takes a whiff and there is a smell and it's tobacco, just like we said. Because everybody back then smoked in their cars. So it smells so, like somebody's smoking Chesterfield in here for 20 yeah. years. Yeah, it's, Steve Buscemi tries to say, no, it's just old smell. And he's like, no, nah, there's good old smell and bad old smell. <laughs> Lewis wants a $3,000 smell discount. And Steve Buscemi won't do it. He says, hey, man, I'm already getting fucked. I'm getting divorced. I wouldn't. And But Lewis won't do it. And he won't go down the 3000 So then LD says, hey, could be worse. It could have a colostomy bag. And Steve Buscemi gives him a a dirty look. Kind of just a classic, yeah, classic yeah. Steve Buscemi uh, side eye. Did you yeah. watch uh, Boardwalk Empire? No, I never did. Actually. Oh, man, we we were absolutely insane for that show. I mean, I like a gangster 20s, 30s kind of, you know, Agent Carter kind of thing. Like, I love that. Like stuff set in the past back then. That show was really good. He was uh, he was the star of it. He was the main I remember gangster I bad it. guy. He he's really good in it. Yeah, I mean, I need to watch the, all these other shows are ending. I need to watch something. Nucky. His name is Nucky. Nucky. All right. Did you watch um, Miracle Workers by any chance? Did you ever watch I that know. show? I don't even know what that is. It's a show. Each season was like a completely different. If they had the same actors, C.B. Semi was one of them, and, but each season was like a different, completely different sort of scenario. Now, the first season, he played God. Uh, anyway, it's really, it's pretty funny. And it's got, uh, what's his name? Harry Potter. and uh, Daniel Radcliffe. Yes, Daniel Radcliffe, who was also very funny, like surprisingly. Very yeah, he's funny. a good actor. Yeah. You should check out the Harry Potter movies. Uh Maybe. I, Maybe I'm not. just teasing. We had this. We had this conversation. I'm, I'm teasing. That was a that was a callback. Unfair to yeah. Kirk Cass listeners. Yeah. Anyways, yeah, he gives him that look. Sorry, we go back. They're going to the lawyer's office because they got to sign these papers for Jeff. And Larry sees the juror, 
who gave him the dirty look, and he is a valet. Yeah, he's got his little vest on and tie and everything. And Yeah. So Larry's like, um, hey, I feel like, you know, and I love it. He's, he, just, he says, you looked a sconce. I love, <laughs> of, I love the word a sconce. You don't get to use that enough. Yeah, you're. I think you're pronouncing it in a weird way, but you're saying. What way am I pronouncing? Isn't that what he's, isn't a that what Larry stance. says? It's a scans? Yeah. It's a and that's how Larry says it. Is it a sconce? Sconce. Sort of sconce. I'm just, I'm just, now I'm just tearing into you for no reason. Well, I, I want to pronounce it right. The scans. <laughs> a scans. It's like when I, it's a like scons. earlier before the show, I said, I don't want to do this, but I have to say this word. Equidistant. Yes, you did say. Or equidistant. <laughs> See, maybe, you know, people say things differently. Who am I to judge? It's not, I can't, I, I want to try to do the Say it any way thing. you want. No, I want a sconce. A sconce. Yeah, I wanted Google to say it for me, like but it's dance. not. It's, like I, a Because I have the headphone thing in, it's not going to work, so. All right, whatever. He gave him the dirty look. And the guy says, the name tag says Victor. And he says, well, there's two kinds of people in the valet world. There's handers and there's tossers. And you're a tosser, which I think is another British thing. Like, Yeah, that means you're like a wanker. Yeah. Tosser. And he's not a, he's not a fan of, to- of tossers. He's like, yeah, it's dangerous. You get hit in the eye. And Larry's it's like, it's a whole job. Yeah, <laughs> so he's, he's like, it's a safety issue. <laughs> safety issue. So he's like, this is your whole thing. Another sort of weird exchange with that. But yeah, Larry does not agree. He's like, that. it's it's fun, <laughs> he keeps saying. So they go up to sign the papers. Jeff's lawyer has this really nice, he has a really nice pen. And Larry says, oh, I like this pen. And the guy's like, yes, it's very nice. He's like, I really <laughs> like it. Like, they're great <laughs> for signing. I love he's just, they're great for signing. <laughs> Either he's not picking up on it, or he just does not want to give up this pen. But Larry's like, oh, you you know, I bet you have a lot of them. Where can I get a pen like this? (laughs) Doesn't work. Yeah, and you like the lawyer even asks for the, yeah, can I have the pen back? Can I have that? I I need that back. Yeah, he takes it back. So... So like they and then they make a few jokes about you know ah pulling the plug, so they go back <laughs> to Jeff's house, and like they're talking about uh, Susie's like where were you? He's like oh we went to see Mantle, you know. He's like oh yeah he you know he gave me some Jeff gave me some good advice. So they were just so they're lying to her again. Yeah, because she's like well this is like a lawyer thing, and you're his yeah. manager. This has nothing to do with his career. And then she goes she said something that reminded me of my mom and my grandma because they used to say oh look at you me and my cousin Todd would be fucking like rubbing dirt on our pants or something They'd be like, <laughs> look at you two over there freaking frack yeah freaking frack right. over there frickin did frack. you get that and I feel like I, that's maybe I, a New England I thing did. yeah 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 I definitely got it yeah freaking frack but they, they, they even I never knew what it meant but it's apparently two Swedish is it Swedish I think like or Swiss Swiss yeah <laughs> skaters or something like that oh there's something that I and I, I skipped really quick but Jeff and Larry were talking because Jeff found out he gets a text that Steve Buscemi had stomach surgery so Larry thinks oh he did have a colostomy bag so he made like an off color joke about it yeah, and they're like walking out of the lawyer's office, and uh, yeah. he's like, "Oh, I feel bad now. Do I get him a designer colostomy bag? Do they make yeah. like Louis Vuitton? Gucci, yeah, like, yeah, Louis bags? Vuitton. That's right, Louis. <laughs> I, I bet they do. That would be be cool. <laughs> when they're in Jeff's kitchen, he goes to get his cheese out of the fridge, and he's like, "Where's my Where's my Vonderdonk? And Susan's like, "Oh, I ate it. It's crazy. That was a big the next chunk." Day. The next yeah, day. it's the next day. 
And it was, they ate all that cheese, but whatever. He's like, what are you doing? He's like, why? I told you I was coming back for it. She's like, it was in my fridge, and possession is nine-tenths of the law. She's so smart. <laughs> and he's like, what does that mean? Like, but, like, that's the biggest load of shit. Like, if I just fell asleep on your couch, you could just go through my pockets and just take whatever it is? She's like, maybe. <laughs> and then Jeff comes in, and he's like, she ate my cheese. And he's like, Oh yeah, I know. I had it. it was good. It was good. And cheese. she's like, I made him a melt. I made him a melt. Yeah, but he's but, not supposed like, to have sandwiches. He's not what supposed the fuck? to have sandwiches. He can't have a melt. He can't have a grilled yeah. cheese. I feel like they're there's some they're like lying. Larry is all pissed off, and I love it. She says possession is nine tenths of law. He says, What's the other tenth? Fucking over your friends. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was great. <laughs> so then he takes the bottle of palm out of their fridge and says. Possession is nine tenths of the law. It's mine now. And he just walks out with it. <laughs> and she's like, You're taking my palm? Yeah. All right. So he's, uh, Larry goes home. He pulls up to his house and he sees Conan walking his Dalmatian. And he goes, Oh, hey, Conan, it's Larry. And he's like, Yeah. I, I. So he does know Larry. He says, Yeah, I know you, Larry. But he still doesn't Yeah, he doesn't clear... know him. It's not like yeah, they're he... friends or friendly or anything. Right. But obviously he knows of Larry. Yeah. So he says, yeah, I, I know you, Larry. And he's like, uh, did did Lewis call you? And he's like, no, I didn't talk to Lewis. He's like, oh, well, I guess, yeah. Now Larry, it's funny because they, they basically agree. You know what I mean? Like that you need, but since it's not, he's not, he didn't get clearance. I love Conan says, this is basically an ambush. <laughs> yeah but larry like feels bad you know he's like oh i can't believe you know i can't believe this, this is so if we had clearance this would be a much better conversation because conan says like yeah i'll try to remember he's like if you talk to lewis can you just remember he says yeah all right i'll remember and larry's like no nah, you won't people say that to make people feel better and conan's like yeah you're right like it's a perfectly normal conversation but yeah, he goes, yeah, you're right. If I, if I, as soon as I walk away, I'm going to completely forget about it. And I, I do it all the time. Yeah. Right. And he's like chuckling about it. He's having it. He thinks it is a funny joke. Yeah. And Larry's like, see, these are the kinds of interactions we can be having. <laughs> right. If he had clearance, but he doesn't. And, but Conan is all like, this is, these are the kind of conversations I'm trying to avoid. Yeah. Cause, oh, because he makes the, as we, mentioned off air yeah he makes a reference about fatty r larry says i heard fatty r buckle once someone approached him without clearance and he broke a beer bottle over his head or something like that. <laughs> yeah and, and conan's then, uh, like wow that's when yeah that's when conan says that's a long time since i've heard someone make a fatty r buckle reference would you just come from margaret dumont's house which i explained to you earlier was the 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 female actress in the marx brothers so yeah. this is going way back. If you don't know who Fatty Arbuckle is, you definitely don't know who Margaret Dumont is. But maybe <laughs> you do, because a lot of people see Marx Brothers. I'm a big Marx Brothers fan, but I don't think I knew the name of that actress. So, But yeah, it's it's such a funny That's thing, a classic like... Conan bit, too, because he's right. only like, loves... talking about old Hollywood or like right. old-timey presidents and stuff like that. Yeah, he loves history, yeah, and all that stuff. But yeah, like he he says the system has been in place since, you know, like and this is the reason to avoid conversations like this. So like, yeah, all right, I like I'll get clear. They, they've established that it's like an actual thing. <laughs> Which in a way, I mean, it it's even in my experience, it kind of is true like um I've worked in places where there's famous people when I, when you're working you're told don't speak unless spoken to. And then if let's say Bruce Springsteen, like you're working there, you're like bringing right. beers right. around or something <laughs> and you're not supposed to like stop, put your beers down and be like, Oh, Bruce Springsteen. You're supposed to be like, just play cool and not talk. But if, if Bruce is like, Hey, what are you putting the beers over there? Then yeah. you are allowed you are allowed. You have clearance, and you can you can right. talk to him back. Otherwise, you get fired. Well, yeah, I guess like that's the thing. If you're like famous, 
like famous people. You know what I mean? Like, like it's, it's, one thing. you know, like obviously I, do I need clearance to talk to you? Well, obviously not you, but let's say, I don't know who, like when, uh, when your friend moved downstairs from us, like, yeah. you know, I didn't say, Oh, let me know if I could talk to him or something like, you know what right, I mean? Like right. you call you him and I'll talk. In, to in him. fact, I didn't even get it. I didn't even, uh, yeah, I didn't find out till later. So you right. kind of, you kind of eschewed. I guess I did. I jumped the gun on you there, but uh, but it's different. Like when you're famous, right? Because they get approached all the time as it is, and so like and then there's need... the levels of celebrities. It's like the A list and the B list and the C list, and it's right. like you know Larry and Conan A list, you know. But <laughs> yeah, but even Lewis probably B list. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, probably. You know, he just basically just stand up guy. A list, B list. I don't know. It's hard a, to say. He's an a, a plus, I think he's a, an I mean, A list. Plus. Yeah, it's yeah, an A list. He just did. But he's not he's on all those show. shows. Yeah, no, I mean, yeah, he's done a lot of TV shows. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Conan's not a movie star. That's true. But he's A list. Anyway, yeah, it's a funny conversation. It's a funny like exchange. And um, Conan, you know, despite the fact that he's not an actor, is pretty funny. So. And I, yeah, he makes a reference to his dog. He's like, "Oh, you got one of those firehouse dogs." He's like, "No, oh, he's never been in a fire." Like, <laughs> don't stereotype them. Yeah, so can, can you, you stereotype, stereotype a dog? Yeah, you could stereotype a dog. So, anyway, next scene: Larry is back at Steve Buscemi's or to Carlo's house, apologizing about the <laughs> the colostomy bag line. He's like, "I." I didn't know you'd been through so much. And he's like, yeah, well, I've had all these health issues and I'm getting divorced. And apparently he owns a bunch of movie theaters that aren't doing well. So Yeah, because he keeps, he's like, nobody's going back to the movies. No one's going back to the movies. And so Larry's like, ah, uh, yeah. And, and Larry clearly does feel bad. This isn't just something he's doing because he, he feels he should. He actually seems to feel bad for this guy. And then he says, all right, I'll tell you what, I'll buy the car. And he's like, oh, you'll buy the car? And he's like, you know, I, I, I can't give you the discount. So, all right. <laughs> okay. So he's, yeah, that, he's like, the been whole through thing a lot. With, yeah, the whole thing, too, is like uh, also just that, um, like, the the things that they talk about in the show, like the long COVID, nobody's going back to the movie theater, you know, they're yeah. not tropes, so just like make it like seem very like real and in the moment, like, yeah, you know, how people yeah. the the issues people have have to deal with now, you know. Yeah, right. No, no sense of smell, all that stuff. Yeah, the obviously the the Georgia law and everything. So, so yeah, Larry's like, I'll buy the car, you know. And I love. It. He's like, Hey, do you mind driving, following me in my car? So and he's like, no, I'd rather not. <laughs> so, yeah, he's. I'll pay for your Uber back. He's like, you yeah. know. Yeah, like he's so just like you know, Larry thinks he's kind of doing him a favor. You know what I mean? Like, because Lewis wouldn't buy the car. He said he didn't yeah. want his wife to get it in the divorce. So Larry's kind of doing him a favor. We don't know how much the car costs, but it's obviously more than three thousand, way more, because Lewis wanted a three thousand dollar discount. And yeah, I love Larry. Like used car though, you yeah. know, maybe it's like fifteen, twenty k. But yeah. it's also they're talking about like stuff we would never do. We Venmo each other. Right. I'll, I'll be right. honest about that. You can look in our Venmo accounts. You'll see that we sent each other stuff. Sure. But there's no way either one of us would like Venmo you ten grand, even right. if I bought. Even if for some reason I bought your car, there would be <laughs> no way I would be Venmoing you that money. They're just like casually yeah, guess... Venmoing like. More than even a thousand dollars, it would be like crazy to me. But yeah, no, me too. But yeah, I guess when you have all that money, it doesn't really matter. But and I love it. I love. He you know what? Do, he says something to him like, "Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you've been through. I, I mean, I don't have to go through what you've gone through." And he says, "And I love it." Like Steve Buscemi says, "We've all got a lot of baggage." Like, <laughs> another reference, like a bag. I love it. So, oh yeah. And Larry sits in it and it's the seatbelt doesn't work. And he's like, well, this is illegal. He's like, not in 1973. <laughs> like, he's so <laughs> mad. 
The next thing, though, Larry drives it. He stops on his way home to get more Vonderdunk. That's right. And he gets another one of those fancy bags, puts it in the back seat, drives home, and then Leon wants to check out the car, which is this is Leon's only appearance in this episode. He says, This is a white yeah, he's man's so car. so funny. <laughs> he's like, Did you buy this for Mr. Peanut? You know, the guy with the monocle? <laughs> Mr. Peanut. Then, then he says, the JFK fuck Marilyn Monroe in one of these cars? <laughs> he said it looks presidential. So that's <laughs> so good. So then Lewis pulls up and he's mad. He's like, you son of a bitch, you bought my car. And then he's like, I, all right, fuck, you know, you can buy it from me. I'll tell you, how about that? And he says, well, I want the smell discount. <laughs> so he, he gives him and the Larry's smell. Like, I didn't get this. I didn't get the smell discount. I paid full price. Yeah. But Lewis is like, you know, he knows about it. So he's like, yeah, I want the smell discount. And he's like, well, all right, fine. You can have it. Just bend my way. But then he says, I was like, how's that sound, babe? Or whatever. And Larry's like, Did, are you babing me? Did you just babe mm-hmm. me? I, I, it slipped out. I think he says or something. Like that. It just, it's really funny. <laughs> yeah, it's like it slipped out. He's going. Larry's going back. He's back in his, his car now, his, his electric car. And he pulls up back to visit Mantle. And he says, I'm just going to charge this. And the guy says, yeah, okay. And he says, can I toss the keys? And the guy says, yeah, sure. He tosses him the keys. He's like, ah, all right. That was fun, right? <laughs> and then Victor yeah. sees him, though, and he says, toss her. So then Larry's talking to Mantle, and he's going over. Mantle's going over, like, the jury had some very negative things to say about you. Not cordial came up. <laughs> repugnant. <laughs> I, I love repugnant, like, I love uh, Sean Hayes must just be making up all this stuff. It's just yeah. it's brilliant. No, I like that. Especially is like not cordial at all. <laughs> like yeah. all those are funny. And he says, this is Victor, the, the valet. It's his, he's like, no, it's not. So he says, he's, I, he's an angry man. He brings up 12 angry men because he thinks one man can sway a jury. He's like, there's only one angry man. And he's sitting across from me, which is not. <laughs> yeah. And then they bring up the cheese, like like Mantle. He's like, and Susie told me about the, that you were mad about the cheese. He's like, yeah, that was my cheese. <laughs> this is so weird. He says, you have an issue. Yeah, with why cheese? is Susie talking to Mantle? Oh, I, I don't know. She, she recommend him or something in the first place? I, I don't, I don't know. Maybe. Yeah. I don't remember. Yeah, he says, you have an issue with keys and cheese. And then I guess he fired. Does he fire him? Basically, he says, "I want a I lawyer." I think so. I side. I'm going to find someone. I'm going to find a yeah. lawyer that agrees with me on the cheese issue. And Mantle's like, "I'm like a judy. I'm I'm trying to represent this like a serious constitutional case yeah, like, here. I'm not here to defend cheese." Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, Larry just kind of shakes his hand and he's walking out. And then he gets a, a message. No, says, but then. Then what he does is he like tosses oh, them like a, right. like some Cheez Its or something. Yeah, I don't know like what it was. Bag. It was like a yeah, like a plastic bag of Cheez Its or something. They're wheat thins or something. Yeah. He says, "Hey, heads up!" Because he they had also like t- talked about the about the tosser stuff. Yeah. He's like, yeah. He said that guy. Like, he Mantle's like uh, Mantle's like valet's job is to take the keys. It's not to have keys thrown at you all day i know that's what you said your face your job is to you know yeah people toss keys to you all day long it's like that's not their job so anyways yeah he goes down and larry goes down though and he talks to the valet and says that was okay right like yeah he tosses it and he hands him the tip and everything and it's all good like that valet is seems cool with it but i don't know if he's just being nice but then he gets a text it says jeff's documents are being messaged to his house okay now i have to interrupt here i saw them signing the document and the lawyer said something like we're yeah we'll get these signed and we'll get them to you myself right. as a, a former bike courier but also i i know how that this works the i immediately thought oh my god they're gonna like deliver those 
to Jeff's house, but Susie is gonna be the one that gets the <laughs> gets the paper. I immediately thought that when they were when he was doing the I like it gambit. I immediately mm. thought that. So were they just kind of like too they were too busy joking about pulling the plug and stuff that they didn't even hear him, I feel like, or they didn't think no, about it. No, they knew or... they knew, but he but the lawyer was letting them know. Right. So why I mean, they over. should have they should have covered that. They should have had They that should have maybe said, covered. Can yeah. you keep the papers here or something or whatever? Yeah. I don't know. Or I don't know why they didn't think of that. Let them know. So Jeff would maybe make sure maybe because they're idiots. Yep. I mean, if you knew about it, they should have known about it. <laughs> I clearly I saw that yeah, it's not like a huge prediction, but I was like, that's exactly what's gonna happen. Right. I mean, because something... that's how lawyers work. They message your <laughs> well, stuff to people's houses. Right. I used to do it. I mean, yeah, literally every week something blows up in their face and you knew that this was going to be the thing. <laughs> but multiple things blow up in his in their face because he goes out and Victor, the valet, has unplugged his car. And so Larry's like, oh, you fucking asshole. <laughs> <laughs> Referencing like, unplugging, uh, I'm going to sign some papers to unplug my friend and kill him. That's right. Pull in the plug. He pulled the plug. And I love it. And he's like, you tossed, you lost. That was the line. <laughs> yeah. He tells him. <laughs> so he's driving home. His car says low, low battery, low battery. 4%. Then... Yeah. 4%. That's not good. I don't know anything about electric cars. I don't think I've ever been in one. I might have been in an Uber or something, but I don't know. You know, I've never like zip car or anything like had one or anything like that. But maybe I have. I don't know. How quickly do they lose gas power? I mean, I guess we don't know how far he's driving. In LA, everything is far. So Yeah, yeah. And, I mean, who knows? But it might not even be that far. But you know when your your phone's on four percent and you're starting to panic. Yeah, that's you know, true. In your car. I, yeah. And so it finally dies because he's rushing home. He tries calling Jeff. It's not, you know. Jeff didn't pick up. His car dies right outside Conan's house. <laughs> he sees Conan in through the window. And instead of going to the door, like, why doesn't he just go to the door? <laughs> Conan's sitting there, like, strumming his guitar. Yeah, he's got his guitar. So psyched. And Larry Play bangs guitar on, on the TV. I know. He must be psyched. You're right. So he bangs on the window. And Conan says, this is completely unauthorized. <laughs> And he's like, no, it's an emergency. Can't you just grant me authorization, emergency authorization? He says, there's no such thing. <laughs> so Conan, like, reluctantly goes outside. And he and Larry are talking in front of the house. And he's like, and so Jeff, and he's telling her about the whole thing, Jeff and Susie. And he's like, I don't know any of these people, but I'll, you can borrow the car. Let me go get the keys. He says, by the way, you have something on your glasses. So Conan starts to walk away. Larry's like, oh, thank you, thank you. He takes his glasses off to clean them. Conan says, oh, the keys are in my pocket. Turns, tosses the keys, and they hit Larry right in the eye, just like everybody so said good. would happen. It's like Christmas it's like a story. Like Arbuckle uh, yeah. sketch. <laughs> You'll shoot your eye out, kid. You know, it's like one of those. So. And Larry's all pissed because he's like, why did you toss? Why yeah. did you toss? And Conan <laughs> just goes, it's fun. It's fun. <laughs> Which is exactly what Larry had been saying right. to all of these guys. <laughs> so then we cut to, we're back in Jeff's lawyer's office. They're all using the nice pens, I notice. And Jeff, Larry, and Susie are all signing, assumingly signing back, par returning to Susie. Yeah, signing it back, yeah. Yeah. Jeff, and Larry both have bandages over their eyes. So it, I'm assuming that Susie, like, punched Jeff or or whatever. Oh, yeah. But Larry ha is obviously from the Keys. So so Susie says, we're done here, which I thought was pretty funny. Meanwhile, Jeff gets a text, another text. I don't know if you happen to notice. I don't know if this is an inside reference or something. This person who's texting him about CB Semi. His name is Jay Hornstock. 
Is that somebody? Do you have any idea? I, I wonder who that is. Didn't know that. Yeah, there was like a there name. There was even the, a name associated they, with it. Because they showed like a close-up of the phone. And um, anyway, I didn't know. I think it he might did be. say something earlier, like that Jeff knew somebody that knew DiCarlo. So they, maybe they mentioned his name right. then or something. Uh, yeah, but I don't know. I that's think how he was going to find out about the colostomy bag or not, which he did. Yeah. There is a character kind of. on the show Psych, but I never watched that show. But anyway, no, I don't know any uh, horn stock from Curb lore. But anyway, the text says it was for an ulcer, not stomach surgery, no colostomy bag. So Steve Buscemi didn't even have a colostomy bag after that whole thing. Larry, the next scene, he's on the phone with Lewis. And he's t- telling him like he didn't even have a colostomy bag and all that, and and so he, Larry feels like basically he took him for a ride on the car, and but Lewis loves it, and he's like, oh, it's great. I'm driving to meet this woman. I think she might be the one. And Larry <laughs> says, I can't believe at your advanced age that you still use phrases like the one. <laughs> yeah. It is I, and Lewis, I love it. Lewis is like, oh, she's great. She's beautiful. She laughs at my jokes. I love that that was always his thing. <laughs> like A comedian to the end. She laughs at my jokes. But I mean, that is a thing. Hey, hey. love a woman the, laughs at my jokes. Like, since like the very early episodes of Curb, like Lewis is yep. always going on a date and trying to find the one. I know. You know? A lot of different girlfriends over the years, you know? But well, he's like, he, he, yeah, there was the one, do you remember one of my favorites was um, when Larry went to buy pants and he was trying them on and the woman was just like watching him try <laughs> yeah. on the pants. <laughs> <laughs> so he was like taking his pants off in front of this woman and kind of just like looking at her and she's looking at him. Classic. So anyways, Lewis pulls up in front of this woman's house. He's got his wonderful new car. He loves it. Meanwhile, before that, Larry, he's making some crack. He's got his crackers out there. He goes to the fridge to get the Vonderdunk, and he remembers he left it in the car. They actually yeah. flash back to him putting it like bag. yesterday. Yeah, like yeah. so that cheese, whatever kind of cheese it is, is in the yeah, back of Lewis's car, and maybe it smells. Yeah. Yeah, well, this woman thinks it, it's this woman gets in the car. He's like, "Hey, you look great." And she says, "Oh, fucking smells in here," and she just storms right up. And do you know who that woman was, Clay? I don't. You don't know who that was? You're gonna that, tell me. I am gonna tell you because it made me happy. Her name is Joyce Lipinski Lewis. Richard Lewis's real life wife. Oh, isn't that sweet? Yeah. So all that talk about her being the one and how pretty she was, like that. Like I feel like that was kind of an you know an inside thing. That's really sweet. They got her to play this woman. And if that is, let's. I mean, I don't know if Lewis will be back. There's two more episodes. If if that is the final time we see Lewis, I love it. That was fitting. He's got to be in the finale. Let's come on. But you're right. Yeah, he's got to be in the finale. But what a great moment. He must nice. have yeah. loved doing that. You know, like he probably knew he didn't have a lot of time left, you know? I think he I think he knew that before they started filming. Right. That's why, like, you see him, like, in uh, – and we're not going to get all sad here. But that's why you no. see him, like, mostly, like, in the car or in the golf cart, you right. know, what I mean? or sitting yeah, down at, at dinner you know, or, you know, at lunch. Yeah, yeah, he's, he's just not... like sitting. Yeah. At the AA meeting, he's standing up for a little bit, but yeah, right, he's very right. Yeah. But I mean, what a great thing to have his wife play, you know, to play with his wife in that one scene. It's brief as it was, but yeah. Very so, nice. Very it was touching. very lovely. 
Yeah. Yeah, I don't ride the IMDb as much as you do about the Well, I was just curious. No, because I actually looked in the credits. You know, they played the credits and they're like blah 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 and they said Joyce Lipinski Lewis as Lewis's date. And I was like, Lewis? Wait a minute. And I so I looked then I looked her up. Not on IMDb, but I just Googled and yeah. She was in nice. Yeah. That's nice. So nice one. Very cool. Yeah, and she's pretty funny. Yeah, it was. I love the way she just said, fucking stinks in here. <laughs> like she just... yeah, right. Yeah, and then so... when they like before they cut away and Lewis is just in the car, he's just doing this. Uh... <sighs> yeah, he's trying to smell. <laughs> he's just doing the sniff <laughs> sound. He did say earlier that he was trying. There was there was a chance that he could have surgery to fix his sense of smell. <laughs> He'd go to he, Europe. And get... He'd have to go to like Switzerland. He's like, I'm not sure if I'm gonna go. He's like, there's no smell surgery. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I mean, you're right. Lewis will probably be back, but even so, that's probably one of the one of the last times we see him, and he got to play off his wife. So well, Lewis centric moment, you know, all yep. love that. It was great. This whole episode was great. I love this one. Classic. I love Conan, obviously. CB Semi, as we mentioned. So this was a great one. So And this time I did stay after the credits and we watched the Yes. We, we watched the preview for next episode and uh crossover with Vampire Council. Uh, I know. Go listen to that now if you like Matt Berry. I was like, whoa, it's Laszlo. Yeah, and he's going yeah. yeah. to gonna be starring in a movie based on the Waze app. Yeah, I'm going to be in a feature. A feature based on the you know, Waze. He's like, it doesn't sound like a very good idea. <laughs> but also, yeah, we're talking about kind of keeping it relevant or whatever. There is a bit with Jeff and Larry, and Jeff says Susie has COVID, so she has to stay upstairs. And Jeff gets downstairs because they had to be, they had to isolate. And yeah, it's like F, oh, it's Jeff World down here. It's Jeff World down here. <laughs> so, uh, classic. But also the episode, according to IMDb, which I know, yes, I live on. It's called Ken and Kendra, or Ken slash Kendra, sort of like Glenn or Glenda. I feel okay. like you know yeah. Ed, the Ed Wood movie. And it says, a misunderstanding with Cheryl's masseuse threatens Larry's public image. The wow. public's perception of Larry then sinks even lower when he gives the wrong person COVID. Oh, he gives COVID to someone. Oh. Uh-huh. Well, there we go. That's So they're going to cover that before the end of the season. <laughs> the end wow. of the series. Yeah. Guess, yeah, well, great. I have to relive that. <laughs> oh no! But I feel like I don't know if this is a thing they're doing intentionally or just like they're putting all these. I mean, every every season has like funny guest stars, but this one it's like we got to get everybody in before the end, like Steve Buscemi and and Matt Berry and Conan. It's great. Yeah, they got to get them all in. Got to get them all in. There's only a couple left, so I'm very excited. Also a little sad, obviously. I'm going to be yeah. writing uh, for my sub stack. A sub sort stack? of curb ending, sort of a, a post, a tribute to the end of curb. Um, so oh, Very well. Yeah, if you don't want to read that. Go if sometime. I'll get it out in the next couple of weeks. <laughs> All right. Uh, you going to wait to the end or are you going to? No, I'll just put it. For an ultimate yeah. post. As soon as it's the ultimate person. Yes, the ultimate person will do the the ultimate post. I don't know when it will come out. When it's done, like I said, maybe this week, whatever. But um, it's sort of about like I mean, obviously, because my Seinfeld fandom goes all the way back to the like 1989, the beginning of Seinfeld, and then that went to 1998, and then there were like a couple years, and then. Curb started in 2000. Now, I didn't have HBO back then, but I knew of this show, 
and then of course Larry's taken a few breaks over the years, but like it's been this is like almost thirty five years of this yeah. kind of show, you know, about nothing, about nothing exactly, and these people that I sort of feel some sort of connection to, you know, like weirdly enough. And there's a lot of times you and I talk a lot and it's like, oh, that's this is such a curb thing or, you know what I mean? Like something that would happen. Oh, a lot, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? So I've always felt this connection. And now like, yeah, there won't be new adventures. So I'm mean, a little sad. But. Well, I, I mean, I, I honestly was surprised that they did this season or the last season. You yeah. Know? I thought yeah. It was, I thought we were done for. We're done for. We're done You're right. for. You're right. So these have already been sort of bonus seasons, I guess. Anyway, look for that Substack, Dursen.substack.com. Follow me and do all that other stuff. Also, follow us on YouTube, as Clay has uh, been very busy over there. As we just said, uh, we've got a lot of episodes, including all those. Well, mostly it's just shadows. another place where all of our podcasts will now always be there. It's just like another spot. Like you, you put it on Spotify. We, we put it on the site and now we're just kind of like, it's almost like an archive that if you want to listen to, it's an option to listen to the uh, YouTube version, which is not us on camera, but just like the audio version is up there. So it's just another spot. A Google podcast went away. So this is kind of the replacement. I think that's kind of the intention so uh, oh all our stuff's there and spotify right. and apple podcasts and stitcher right. and all sorts of other places yeah absolutely so but you put like you know you put a lot of effort into it i want people to see you know you have the cool images and the little uh i call that little register thing down there where it goes like bloop, 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 you know Oh yeah, kind of like the sound waves. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Sound That's waves. all easy to do. The oh, hard well. stuff is like editing all the audio. But, yeah, uh, you know, it sure. gets done between the two <laughs> it, of us. It gets done. You're right. Yeah, so. we both do it. We both do it. Well, that's that's a count. So yeah, take a listen. Uh, hope you enjoy it. Listen to all of our stuff, and yeah, two more episodes of Curbcast until we start doing other stuff which we have talked about so there may be more curb cast but yeah two more I new mean, you, show recaps yeah i feel like we should watch definitely watch the pilot if nothing else right yeah, yeah. that sounds good might, like, the, that the wound might be a little too fresh right after the series ends but right. i feel like we should go okay let's let's go back and watch the pilot because that guy um that directed the last episode or no, he directed this episode. Yeah, Robert. He was the, yeah. He was the right. one that did the pilot. So. Yeah. Can, wow. Been there since the beginning. Yeah. So very cool. Yeah, we'll we'll figure it out. We'll figure it out as we like to say here. The curve yeah. cast. Thanks for listening, everybody. Talk to you later. See you at the club. See you at the club. <laughs>